Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Pre-orders are now available for War of the Spark and Modern Horizons booster boxes. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to another edition of the Magic the Gathering Market Watch. Yet again, I have put together the largest market watch of all time. It seems like every week there's more and more cards spiking. It's not unusual at this point to see Magic cards going up in value rapidly. We're used to that by now. It's the sheer amount of them which is kind of surprising. A lot of modern cards, a lot of commander cards spiking. But there's so much to talk about. Let's just get right into it. Beginning with the top 5 standard legal cards that have lost value this week. Number 5, Arclight Phoenix, goes down $1.47 to $28.99. This card is still dominant, looks great and standard, is a Phoenix deck still. Modern, it has been super strong. We saw that in the results of a lot of tournaments this past weekend. Is it Phoenix decks have been incredible. Mono Red Phoenix decks have been doing well too. Even in Legacy, you're seeing a variety of different Phoenix decks perform very well. So why is this going down in value? Well, this week, Wizards finally announced the deck list for the Challenger decks for 2019. There is a deck called Arcane Tempo, which is going to have a copy of this card in it. So it does mean more copies will get out to the market. And because of that, it softens up a little bit this week. Number four, a similar story with Rekindling Phoenix. It goes down $1.49 to $18.49. Now, this is also going to be in one of those decks, the Lightning Aggro Challenger deck. So you'll find one copy of this in there coming up. And because of that, it softens up. Not as strong of a card as Arclight Phoenix. I mean, this one, of course, is closer to rotation, even though it still has a fair amount of time left in the format. And also, it's not putting up the results in Modern or Legacy like we see from Arclight Phoenix, but it's still a very good card in Standard. You'll find this many times out of the sideboard of Team or Reclamation. There's a variety of aggro and mid-range decks that are performing really well with it, too, in the format. Number three is Hydroid Crisis, down $1.62 to $28.99, the darling of Ravnica Allegiance. Maybe not seeing as much play as we was seeing a few weeks back, but it's still a key part of the Saltai midrange decks and Simic Nexus decks. In Modern, you might find this in a Mono Green midrange deck kicking around, and in Legacy, even now in Food Chain decks sometimes. The Star City Games Legacy Classic last weekend had a Food Chain deck come in 7th place, running one of these in the main. Number two is Carnage Tyrant, down $1.93 to $20. And surprisingly enough, this was not in the Deadly Discovery Challenger deck, which was a Golgari midrange deck. Thought for sure we would see a deck running at least a copy of this, just because it's going to rotate out this fall. It was a key mythic, but it just wasn't there. With that being said, though, the card is still not seeing enough play to warrant the $20 price tag. It has lost some of its positioning in the meta. You will find this sometimes in Saltai midrange decks. Some don't run it. But some will run one or two copies of the main, others will run one or two copies in the sideboard, or a combination of one and one. But it is out there. And aside from that, you can still find this in some modern sideboards, usually a one of in decks like Titan Shift. Again, it's still seeing play, but it will come down more. Number one, another big mythic loses value with History of Benalia, going down $1.94 to $9.51. Now you're going to find two copies of this one in the United Assault Challenger deck. So that is going to put a fair amount of copies out there into the marketplace, and that's why this has softened up. Still see standard play. You'll find this in Agrodex, whether it's Azorius or Mono White Agrodex currently in the format, or sometimes in the tokens builds. There's Selesnia and Bat tokens decks still kicking around out there too. Okay, let's move on to the top five standard legal cards that have gained value this week. I do have a number of honorable mentions though, because some of the cards that are standard legal that are on our list today are actually older cards, and I didn't want to take away from some of the cards from the newer sets. So let's see what we got. Here's the first honorable mention, Chromatic Lantern. This is the one from Guilds of Ravnica, going up 25 cents to 449. Just an awesome commander card. Stomping Ground. This is the one from Guild Pack. You're going to notice some of these original Shocklands are heating up a little bit. This one's only going up 39 cents, but there's a trend here I wanted to show you. This goes up to 22.49 this week. And you'll find this in some big standard decks like Teamer Reclamation and Gruel Aggro and Modern. You're going to find this in Dredge, Jund, and many more. Next honorable mention is Crucible of Worlds. The Magic 2019 copy going up 25 cents to 14.25. The 10th edition copy going up 41 cents to 18.40. Now Crucible is not seeing extensive play right now, but enough play I think for people to notice it. Many Tron builds will run a copy out of the sideboard. Not all, but many of them. 
Mono Red Prison, you'll find this sometimes in the main deck as a one of. Legacy Lands decks, you'll find a copy of this in a lot of those boards and other modern and legacy builds too. And our last honorable mention is Blood Crypt. This is the one from Dissension, another original Shockland going up. This one goes up 48 cents to 25.24. In standard, sometimes you'll find one copy of this in Is It Phoenix decks because of Discovery and Dispersal. If you want to play that Dispersal side, this opens up that option. But this is more of a modern card, honestly. You're going to find this in Dredge, Grixis, Death Shadow, Jund, and more. Number five, Hallowed Fountain from Dissension again. Goes up 71 cents to 19.99. Another key part of a lot of big mana bases right now in standard. Esper Control, Azorius Aggro, Jeskai Drakes. Let's move over to modern. You're going to find this in multiple control builds as well as spirit builds there, plus many others. Number four, Watery Grave. Two copies, Guilds of Ravnica going up 37 cents to 10.99. Ravnica City of Guilds going up 96 cents to 19.99. In standard, you'll find this in Saltite Midrange and Esper Control, two huge decks right now. In modern, Grixis Death Shadow and War Prison and a couple other really big decks. Also in modern, you'll find this in the new Saltite Teaching Reclamation deck. And in Legacy, this is in Demir Death Shadow builds. Number three, Oath of Teferi going up 64 cents to 347. This is the first of a number of cards we're going to talk about today that is moving because of War of the Spark speculation. We know there's going to be 36 Planeswalkers in that set, so cards that enhance Planeswalkers or protect against Planeswalkers are pretty hot right now. This is one of them. Number two is Kaya or Zav Usurper, up $1.15 to $8.99. Now, this card is climbing quite a bit this week. Why is that? Well, it sees a little standard play. Esper Control decks, many times you'll find a copy in the main, but it's really about the other formats here. Modern Eldrazi and Taxes decks, a lot of times you're going to find two copies of this in those decks now. The big news, though, might be a Magic Fest Tampa last weekend. At the GP, there was a Lantern Control deck that came in 8th place, running one copy of this in the main as well as one in the sideboard. You'll find this in some other modern builds now, too. Number 1, the Immortal Sun, up $1.69 to $30.88. This does see occasional standard play, but that's not why it's number 1 today. It's another card that is going to be moving because of the speculation around War of the Spark. A lot of people think maybe they need some extra protection from those new Planeswalkers coming. This is one option. Okay, let's move on to the top five modern legal cards that have lost value this week. Number five, Sword of Fire and Ice, down $1.66 to $61.74. This is the Modern Masters copy, and this is a solid legacy card. You're going to find this in Death and Taxes, Maverick, and other legacy builds. It's also a decent commander card, too. Number four is Send Triplets, down 260 to 3174. This is just normalization off of some recent spikes. Great commander card that's been hot over the last couple months. Number three is Tarmogoyf from Future Sight again, down 271 to 7885. This card has been dropping over the last few weeks. You know, ever since Ultimate Masters reprinted the Goyfs as a mythic, we have been seeing them all trying to stabilize and normalize and find their new price point, even this one. This copy will always hold the most value, though, just simply because it is the hardest to find in good condition, being from Future Sight, also has the unique art, the unique card frame. A lot of people are always going to gravitate towards this one, but still, it is coming down. With that being said, though, I do think everything's going to continue to stabilize down for a little while longer, but I wouldn't expect these cards to stabilize a whole lot lower than they are now, because they are seeing a lot of important play. Golgari Midrange, Jund, Shadow Zoo, all real big decks in modern right now. In Legacy, you'll find this in Team or Delver, and this is in a lot of other modern and Legacy decks too. Number two, Snapcaster Mage from Modern Masters 2017 goes down 316 to 6599. Another card that's trying to find its price point after the reprinting in Ultimate Masters is a Mythic. Much like the previous card, sees a ton of play in a lot of different places. In modern right now, some of those wildly popular Is It Phoenix decks are running this, not all, but some of them. Also in Modern, you'll find this in Grixis Death Shadow, another really big deck, and in Legacy Grixis Control, just to name a few. Number one is Scalding Tarn from Modern Masters 2017, down $360 to $100.99. Now this one feels like an anomaly when we're talking about fetch lands because it's going down in value. All the others pretty much are going up in value, more on that in a few moments. However, the reason for this is this card has spiked rather aggressively recently, and because of that, you're getting a normalization week now, and it's coming down just a little bit. Still over $100, though. Again, we're doing top 10 modern legal cards that are moving this week because so many cards are jumping in value. You're going to be surprised by these prices if you haven't been watching the market. I actually have three honorable mentions on this list just because I wanted to make sure we covered every card that was moving by at least $5. Yup, you heard me right, $5. 
What that means is there's a lot of cards still moving relatively significantly that we just don't even have time to talk about on the episode today. So stay really close to the market. Many of those cards are the fetch lands, so keep that in mind. Ever since we found out that Modern Horizons was not bringing us fetch lands, they have gotten super hot. You'll see that on the list today, but let's get into it. Our first honorable mention is Rise of the Dark Realms, up 506 to $20.56. So there's a number of factors on this card. It's mostly a commander card, obviously, with that casting cost, but there are different commander players interested in this. Some are speculating on War of the Spark bringing more zombies with Nicol Bolas, and that's very possible, maybe probable at this point. And if that's the case, there could be some new graveyard interactions to mess around with in commander. Also, this is already good with a very popular new commander, Tasa Karlov. And aside from that, this is also good with Judith the Scourge Diva, I've seen people using Ghoul Caller Gisa if they want to go like Mono Black Zombies, or even Gisa and Giraffe if they want to go Demir. So this is already a very popular commander card that could get better in the future. Okay, our next honorable mention is a modern card. It's also a legacy and vintage card. Even though it is restricted and vintage, still sees plenty of play there. It is Chalice of the Void, Modern Masters up 530 to 5589, Mirrodin up 568 to 5783, Masters 25 of 570 to 5499. So why is this card moving like this now? Well, it did get reprinted as a Mythic in Masters 25 and has been relatively soft since that happened. But recently, a couple big decks have made this card take off. The first one is the Modern War Prison decks. They run four in the main and they are doing very well right now in the meta. In Legacy, Mono Red Prison also runs four in the main and that's another really solid deck in that particular meta. Other than that, you're going to find this in many other decks, sometimes out of the sideboard, but still very present. Our last honorable mention, Kalidas Trader of Get, goes up 573 to 1452. Okay, so I'm a little surprised that it took this long for the card to really catch on, because it has been a solid modern card for a while now, in a couple big decks too, Golgari Midrange and Jund, not to mention a few others. Also, it's great in Commander, it's going to work well with Taysa Karlov and Judith the Scourge Diva, a lot of folks are playing those decks nowadays. And it also has a zombie interaction component, which could tie in with War of the Spark speculation as well. All right, number 10 is Blightsteel Colossus, and this is going up 578 to 5249. Okay, this does see a little bit of play in modern. There's an artifact charge ramp deck that actually did pretty well recently on Magic Online that runs this. This also will see some vintage play. But really, the reason this card and a number of other cards that we're going to talk about today are going up is because of Commander. There's a colorless commander deck that's gotten a lot of attention recently, and a couple of weeks ago it won on the Game Nights episode, and now that same deck was looked at and kind of broken down on the Command Zone podcast this past week. So there are a lot of cards from this deck that are getting hot right now. We'll look at more later. Number 9 is Scalding Tarn, up 586 to 10949. This time it's the Zendikar version, and this time it's going up. So this is an amazing card, and we talked earlier about the issue right now with fetches generally. We know they're not going to be in Modern Horizons. I know they will be reprinted, I'm sure of it, but we just don't know when at this point, and when they are reprinted, in what capacity, what type of product will it be? With all the question marks out there, a lot of people are just biting the bullet and just trying to get their copies now. With that being said, this card touching the $110 mark is really extraordinary for a card like this. And it does make the barrier of entry into Modern a little bit more difficult, for sure. This is in some huge decks. The biggest one right now is is at Phoenix, which is why you're seeing the price bump like this. And the other copy was going up quite aggressively before this week. Also, you'll find this in Burn, Grixis Death Shadow. Legacy will run this in Grixis Control. You're going to find it in other Modern and Legacy builds, too. Number eight, here's another one. Verdant Catacombs from Modern Masters 2017, up $6.50 to $70.05. You're going to find this one in Golgari Midrange, Jun, Titan Shift, and other modern decks too. Also another card that will cross over into Legacy. Number 7 is Paradox Engine, up $6.58 to $40. I was surprised it took this long for this card to spike. It is just awesome in Commander generally, but the extra attention recently is due to the fact that it's part of that colorless Commander deck I mentioned earlier. Number 6, Gemstone Caverns. This one goes up $7.16 to $44.75 this week. This card has seen more and more play recently. Colorless Eldrazi will run this. Free Wind Red will run it. You're going to find it in other modern and legacy builds too. But maybe the big story here is this is a card that could get better if the London Mulligan test goes well and that actually does get adopted. If that's the case, you might see more of this in the future. Number five, Rings of Bright Hearth, up 727 to 6297. Well, here's my one for the video. 
Lorwin had a notoriously low print run for a modern era product, and that is the reason why these cards can get a little bit spiky at times. This is just an amazing commander card. It did heat up recently due to persistent petitioners. It plays into the War of the Spark speculation too, because if there are some good planeswalkers, you would imagine out of 36, there should be one or two, right at least? Then this does get a little bit better with those interactions. But just generally, this card has always been a monster in that format. Number four, Ulamog, the Ceaseless Hunger, goes up $8 to $37.99. Yep, it's another colorless card that is going to fit into that commander deck I've been talking about. But there's a lot of crossover appeal here too, because sure, that commander deck is driving the price this week. But this is also a key part of a popular modern deck you might have heard of it called Tron. Also, you'll find this in Eldrazi builds in both modern and legacy. Number three, Jace the Mind Sculptor from World Wake up 1090 this week to 130, 149. Will nothing stop this card? All right. So the other Jaces are going up a little bit this week, but this one took a big spike. Now, this is the hardest one to find. It's the original from World Wake, so that's part of the reason. But just generally, this is an awesome card. Modern control decks will run this. Legacy control decks will run it. You'll find it in decks like Miracles there. Also, this is great in Vintage and Commander. Part of the reason it has gotten so hot, though, is there is some Modern Horizon speculation that we're going to get a good counterspell brought into the format. Some people have speculated on different counterspells, anything from Force of Will to Mana Drain. However, most likely it will be something like the original counterspell. Regardless, though, if the Modern format does get a strong counterspell, then this card gets even better. Fetchlands are here again. This time it's Polluted Delta coming in at number two, and this is the one from Onslaught. Up 1718 to 5665. Now the Ally Fetchlands did get a reprinting in Cons of Tarkir, so a lot more copies got out there compared to the enemy fetches. Even with those extra copies out there, especially these early Onslaught ones, are starting to move already pretty aggressively. So something to keep an eye on in the future. Also, those Cons ones are moving this week too. They didn't quite make our list today, but some of them were moving a dollar, two dollars, even close to three dollars. Definitely pay attention to them too. With that being said, another real big key card here is that Phoenix decks will sometimes run a copy of this in Modern because they'll try to bring in something like Ravenous Trap out of the sideboard. Also, this is in Grixis Death Shadow. Over in Legacy, you'll find this in Grixis Control and other builds there too. Number one is Nether Trader going up $18.73 to $29. All right, so what is happening here? Well, again, this is all about Commander. Tesa decks will run this. This actually combos with Tesa Orzov Scion, which was recently reprinted in the Orzov Guild Kit as a foil with some new art. The other part of that combo is Phyrexian Altar, which was recently reprinted as a rare in Ultimate Masters. Put it all together, a lot of folks are building the Tesa deck. If you want to put a little spice in there, you're going to want this card, and because of that, it's moving up rapidly. Okay, let's move on to our Vintage Spotlight. This is where we talk about cards that are popular in Legacy, Vintage, or 93-94. Also, any cards that are important to collectors. Back to basics, going down this week, 230 to 3230. And this is, of course, the original Urza Saga copy. This did get a reprinting in Ultimate Masters as a rare. Solid Legacy card, though. You're going to find this not just in sideboards. Many times you'll find this in the main of decks like Miracles. Toxic Deluge. This is the Ultimate Masters copy going up 637 this week to 2799. You'll find this in Legacy Sideboards. It's also a great commander card. Next is Mana Drain from Iconic Masters up 735 to 8522. I mentioned earlier a lot of people are speculating on cards that could show up in Modern Horizons. It's a dangerous speculation though because if the card does show up there, you know a lot more copies are going to be reprinted. Eventually this price will retract. However, there's going to be an in-between time. If this card truly is in the set and gets reprinted, then a lot of people might scramble for an early copy, and you might actually be able to sell these for a pretty high price until the set actually drops. That is a pretty big gamble, and I would never advise that, because first off, this card might not be in the set. Secondly, even if it is, we don't know how exactly the market's going to react because we've never experienced anything quite like this before. And even if it does react favorably for this card, it is only going to be very short term. So yeah, if you want this card, by all means buy it. It might not be the best time to buy it though. Although this is one of those cards that is a great vintage and commander card over time. It's only going to increase until we do finally see a reprint. Next we have Unlimited Bad Moon. I say this every week, but these Unlimited cards have been really hot. They continue to stay hot. This one's going up $12.61 to $55. 
Another card some people think might show up in Modern Horizons. I don't know if it's going to happen, but it's Force of Will from Alliances going up 1380 this week to 99.99. Again, regardless, this is a solid card. I actually think this one has been undervalued for a while. Great in Legacy, great in Vintage. The Eternal Masters copy is going up a little bit this week too, but not to the same degree. Sylvan Library from Eternal Masters goes up 1518 to $53. Another solid card for Legacy and a great Commander card. Howling Mine, as we go back to Unlimited, it goes up $30.08 this week to $149.99. Plateau from Unlimited, of course, this is on the reserve list, but did get reprinted and revised. It goes up $48.27 to $4.75 this week. Same story here, Underground City from Unlimited, much like the last card, it is on the reserve list, but did get reprinted and revised. Goes up $184.51 to $1,649.50. Now, the reason this one's going up this much is because we got some higher grade copies out in the marketplace this week and it's pushing the price point up a little bit. All right, it's time for another huge Commander Spotlight. I'm going to go real fast here. I'm not going to go into all the various details why each card is going up, but I will tell you at least the general big reason behind it. We have a lot to cover, so let's get going. First, we have a card going down, though. Conveniently enough, if you want to pick up the card that was going up in the modern section, it's Phyrexian Altar. The original one from Invasion, it goes down $1.71 to $28.69. Still a little bit soft after that Ultimate Master is reprinting at rare. Here's our cards going up. Sakashima the Imposter up $1.02 to $28.44. This card has been very hot in recent months. Plays very well in Commander with Yurko the Tiger's Shadow. Karlov of the Ghost Council goes up $1.10 to $15.02. Another card that has been hot and obviously plays well in those Tasa decks. But this week it was also featured on the Star City Games Commander Versus episode. Hall of the Bandit Lord goes up $1.13 to nineteen twenty-five. This is actually good with Prime Speaker Vanifar. As a matter of fact, I've even seen this creep into some of those modern builds around her. This could also work well with Nikki of the Old Ways. Here's one I mentioned earlier, Ghoul Caller Gisa goes up $1.15 to eighteen ninety-nine. Good in Tasa decks and also another speculation card if zombies are coming in War of the Spark, this could get better. Vile Smasher the Fierce goes up $1.16 to eleven ninety-nine. Now you can only give this one in foil. It's a good commander card, but the main reason it's moving this week is because of Legacy. There is this really weird Grixis Commander Delver deck that runs two of these in the main, and it actually performed well on Magic Online, so I think a lot of people are watching this one. Mirren of the Clan Neltoth goes up $1.17 to $15.88, another card that can play well with Tasa Karlov or Prime Speaker Vanifar. Even though the colors are a little off, it takes a little work, but it is good with both of those cards. Ragnar, this is up $1.19 to $33.09. Whenever these Gold Legends reserve list cards go up, I like to point them out. Shieldred Whispering One, up $1.27 to $15.28. This has seen a little competitive play in the past, but right now it's moving because of Commander. This happens to be the Iconic Masters copy. Another card that plays well with Tasa, Judith, or even Marin. Nim Death Mantle goes up $1.35 to $9.49, and you can probably guess why. This does play well with Judith as well as Tasa. And perhaps if War of the Spark does bring us some zombie and graveyard interactions, this card could be getting better in the future. If That Betrays goes up $1.35 to nine ninety-five. a card that was in that colorless deck that was featured not only on Game Nights, but the Command Zone recently. Arena Rector up $1.40 to nineteen seventy-six. We're about to get a lot of Planeswalkers with War of the Spark, of course, and that is why a lot of people are looking at this one. Teferi Temporal Archmage goes up $1.50 to twenty-two fifty-nine. This is actually good with Prime Speaker Vanifar as well as Persistent Petitioners. Selvala, Heart of the Wilds, goes up $1.58 to $49.33. It's almost up to $50 now. This is generally a good commander card, and it works well with Nikki of the Old Ways. Sliver Legion goes up $1.66 to $54.99. There's been a lot of buzz just around Slivers recently in Commander. We have seen a number of different articles and videos out there on those type of decks. But also, there has been talk by Mark Rosewater about a possible return to Lorwyn in the future. Remember, Lorwyn had the changeling mechanic, which meant a creature with changeling was every creature type. Could play well in the future with slivers. Aura Shard spikes this week. This is the one from the original Commander going up $1.69 to nineteen ninety nine. This is just good if you generally have a lot of creatures in Commander. Maybe you're playing Selesnia Tokens or something like that. Ulamog, the Infinite Gyre. This is the one from Ultimate Masters. It goes up $1.80 to $21.88. This one has seen Modern and Legacy play in the past, but this week it's all about that colorless Commander deck. Consecrated Sphinx, just a solid card. This is the one from Iconic Masters, going up $1.82 to $17.33. 
Charcoal Diamond goes up $1.83 to four zero nine. This card has been super hot recently. This is the one from Commander 2014, which has that really striking art. I do think this cycle of cards from Commander 2014 with this really strong art is just going to be hot generally until they finally do get reprinted. But it is probably no coincidence that this is the one that gives you black mana, considering how popular Tesa is right now, as well as Judith. Diligent Farmhand goes up $1.86 to three sixteen, so that's a pretty big increase for this one. And this is a card that does get mentioned from time to time on the Commander's Quarters YouTube channel. It's a nice budget way to ramp a little bit. Staff of Domination from 5th Dawn remains hot, going up $1.91 to three five seventy one this week, and this plays well with Prime Speaker Vanifar. Cyclonic Rift from Modern Masters 2017 goes up $1.94 to twenty two fourteen. This sees a little modern play, but this is a huge Commander staple at this point. Gets a lot of mentions on the Command Zone podcast. Replenish, this is on the reserve list, going up $1.99 to $52.16. There's still definitely a market for those cards that care about enchantments out there. Ever since the Bant Adaptive Enchantment deck came out with the Commander 2018 line, a lot of folks have been picking up these cards. Planar Bridge from Ether Revolt goes up $204 to $7.99, another card that is in that colorless Commander deck. Darksteel Forge goes up $206 to $18.31. This is the one from Darksteel. And again, another card you'll find in colorless commander builds. Storm Cauldron from 6th edition goes up 214 to 404. Most likely, this one's a buyout. It feels a little bit odd. It does work well with burgeoning. It also works well with the new Lavinia that came out recently. But this does feel like an unusual spike. Sensei's Divining Top. Okay, another card that you might play in a colorless commander deck. Eternal Masters goes up $1.44 to 2499. Champions of Kamigawa goes up 218 to 2499. And of course, this does see some vintage play too. Another sliver here with Sliver Queen, but this one's on the reserve list going up 220 to 7397. Darkest Hour from 7th edition going up 222 to 463. Another card you might find in Tesa builds. Kozilek Butcher of Truth from Ultimate Masters. Imagine that, another one of these colorless cards goes up 245 to 2801. Again, though, this card has been known to see a little modern and legacy play. Devastation from Portal goes up 295 to 2297. Not necessarily a very popular commander card, but it's an interesting one. Ugin the Spirit Dragon up 321 to 6688. Okay, so this card is always going to be popular because it sees play in Tron. You're also going to find this in modern and legacy Eldrazi builds. Again, this week you get the extra attention off that colorless commander deck. The Tracks of Praetor's Voice remains on our list. Commander 2016 up $1.98 to twenty two ninety nine. dollars Commander Anthology Volume 2 up three sixty five dollars to twenty three sixty nine. dollars This one is only available in foil. Generally, this is a very solid Commander card, no doubt. But this gets better, perhaps, if we get some cool new Planeswalkers in War of the Spark, and that's why it's going up now. Emrakul, The Promised End, goes up three seventy five dollars to twenty four forty seven. dollars much like the other Eldrazi's we've been talking about today, this one sees a little modern or legacy play here or there, but again, it's all about that Commander deck. Avacyn, Angel of Hope. A lot of fans out there of this card in Commander, a lot of fans out there of Angel Tribal, too. Avacyn Restored goes up 229 to 2814. Iconic Masters goes up 377 to 3132. like the Great Distortion up 423 to 1295. Okay, sure, can see a little competitive play here or there, but again, this is all about Commander. This is the commander of that deck I've been talking about. Doubling Season, another card that's getting hot because of War of the Spark and the Extra Planeswalkers. Ravnica City of Guilds goes up $1.70 to forty six eighty three. Modern Masters up two forty seven to forty six thirty six. Battle Bond goes up four ninety five to forty nine eighty two. Last Chance, two copies. Portal goes up two eighty two to fourteen forty one. Starter nineteen ninety nine goes up six dollars to fourteen seventy five. Not a wildly popular commander card, but I've seen people run decks with this and Chance for Glory, Final Fortune in some ways to prevent the game loss, and it can be fun. Azan Tamar, another gold Legends Reserve list card. This one goes up 788 to 179.95. Mana Crypt from Eternal Masters continues this climb this week up 1008 to 190.38. This is an awesome commander card and an awesome vintage card. Bravo Soul Tender goes up 1061 to 2450. You can only find this one in foil. Another card moving because of Tesa strategies. Angus McKenzie, another reserve list gold card from Legends. Good in pillow fort builds. It goes up 1091 to 220 this week. Vampiric Tutor stays hot. The Eternal Masters version is normalizing a little this week, but the other two still going up. Visions up 980 to 6630. Sixth edition up 1490 to 7749. 
Okay, let's move on to our pauper spotlight. First, we have Thorn of the Black Rose going up 18 cents to $1.21. You're going to find this in some of the mono black builds, which are popular right now. Carrion Feeder is next. Scourge going up 10 cents to $1.14. Dual Dex Phyrexia versus the Coalition goes up 20 cents to $1.01. Eternal Masters goes up 22 cents to one twenty six. You'll find this in zombie builds as well as Golgari Aristocrats. Ancestral Mask, you're going to find this in your Hexproof builds. Mercadian Mask goes up $0.12 cents to $1.11. Eternal Masters up $0.23 cents to $1.80. And of course, it's the Black Lotus of Pauper Oubliette. Now, this is the B variant. That means you can kind of read the casting cost a little bit easier. The A variant has kind of that shaded casting cost. This one goes up $0.60, cents, though, this week to $33.81. Another card for those Mono Black Pauper decks. Okay, one card for our Premium Spotlight. I say this every week. I don't like to talk too much about foils because they can be manipulated really easy. And because you don't have a lot of copies online, they tend to get really spiky. And sometimes the prices are misleading. But I wanted to show you this spike. Tron favorite, Chromatic Star, goes up this week. The 10th edition foil going up $65.04 to $99.99. The Time Spiral foil going up $65.91 to $110. Again, as always, be careful with these. I just wanted to point out this spike, but don't overpay for this card. See what happens. Most likely it will come down in the coming days, or you might be able to find it locally for a reasonable price because it's really the online marketplace where you see these big shifts happen. Eventually, that will carry over into your local environment, but if this is a temporary shift, it might just be a blip on the radar. That does it for the market watch. And like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're buying cards right now, stay close to the market. Don't overpay. Don't get caught up in the hype and the excitement because there's a lot of things moving right now. Just be careful. Be thoughtful. But until next time, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.